Hey guys, Wade Willis here to break down Demon Slayer, the movie, Moongan Train. In this video, I'm going to go through all the crazy things that happen in the movie and what I thought about the movie. Now, I am going into things that happen in the movie, so if you haven't seen it yet, there are spoilers here. So I suggest watching my non-spoiler uh, review, which I will link in the description below. And yeah, guys, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, getting kind of close to that. But yeah, let's reach my goal. Overall, the movie was absolutely fantastic. The animation, music, uh, the story was great. I will say I was a bit worried when they went into the dream sequence. And I'm like, oh, are they going to have a whole two hours of them fighting things in dreams? Like... I wouldn't have hated the movie if that's how it was, but I would have been a bit disappointed, though. To me, I thought they did a great job with the dreams, uh, creating that first kind of um, roadblock that the heroes had to go through, where we actually had a lot of good character development with Tanjiro, and in particular, Rengoku, because we did almost knew nothing about him going into this movie. So I was super pumped the more we were learning about him and his family, the interesting dynamic, all the history in his family as well. And I thought Zenitsu and Inosuke's dreams were freaking hilarious. Uh, we had Zenitsu like just basically living his best life with uh, Nezuko, just you mean holding hands with her, giving her piggyback rides. And then Inosuke had some weird... Uh, demented power trip dream that was also hilarious but it fit their personalities really well I thought they weaved those funny dreams into the story really well even though there was something really serious going on at the same time now Tanjiro's dream was absolutely heartbreaking because this is like how he wishes the world was his mom and siblings are alive Nezuko isn't a demon and he has to come to the realization, and he does this with the help of Nezuko, that, okay, this isn't real life, and he knows even though this is where he wishes he was, it isn't real, and he needs to go back to the reality where Nezuko is a demon, and he needs to be able to save her. Which was really heartbreaking. It just putting yourself in his shoes, saying, oh, here's this amazing world I could live in, even though he would be killed in it um but i'm gonna have to go to this other world that sucks where my sister is a demon and demons are constantly trying to kill me um <laughs> that sucks but he makes the choice and goes back to that path i did like the part where we have the lower one he has these kids that are like tied to each of the heroes and their job is to go in to the dream and eliminate the core of each of the heroes and when the kid who's in Tanjiro's dream gets into and sees really the heart uh, Tanjiro's heart and soul and how pure it is he's unable to actually destroy the core which I I really did love I don't know if everyone's gonna like that part but like Tanjiro really is one of the purest people I've ever seen in anime yes he's chopping off like demon heads and stuff like he doesn't enjoy doing it though and there's few people that are like as earnest and pure as him in anime um that are like main characters one of them is gone for most of hunter hunter uh, i don't want to spoil anything and and then toru from fruits basket those two characters are also really earnest but tanjiro really gives them a run for their money with the pureness of his heart overall I really liked the battle with the lower one. Like I said, starting off with the dream sequence was a cool like like addition to get some interesting character development, have that initial roadblock. Then actually fighting him was uh, a lot of fun too. Although this was the battle with him once he like fuses with the train and we see all the weird like tentacle slime things going. For me, that was like the only part of the animation that I didn't necessarily like. Almost any time in anime that I've seen, like where they try to do like either animate it or do CG of some fast moving 
slime tentacle thing. It always looks funky to me, so I'm not blaming it on the animators or like CG. Uh, I just think it's really hard to make that look good at the speed that those things were moving. So I, to me, it, it looked weird, but I'm not like, I don't want to bash the movie for it because I, I haven't really seen anything that accomplishes that well. If you know of something that does, let me know in the comments below and I'll look it up. But yeah, I, anytime I see like a slime thing moving that quickly, it always looks really funky to me. And... After the battle with the lower one, I was expecting kind of a backstory of him and see like what led to him being a demon. I was a bit disappointed we didn't get that. Some people in the comments in my spoiler free review let me know that there was no backstory in the manga either. So it wasn't something the movie took out of the story. And I guess the only reason I really wanted it is because... In Demon Slayer, I feel like that's one of the things the writer does best is showing the humanity in these demons that really are monsters to Tanjiro and all the Demon Slayers while they're fighting. But then we get to see glimpses into what led to them being a demon or things that they've gone through in their life. Like even Rui, who is a savage, like did horrible things to his siblings when we get that flashback and see how horrible his life is and what led to those points, um, it did humanize him a lot. And I, I love that in the story and I would have liked that in, in this as well, but they didn't have it. That's fine. It's just something I would have liked. And after that battle ends, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like, okay, this movie was pretty good. I thought it was entertaining. Um, I enjoyed myself during it. But I felt like it was a bit overhyped. And then the film corrected me immediately when they have the lower third show up. And he has that baller showdown uh, with Rengoku. I'm just going to say that was one of the best fights I've ever seen in anime. The animation, music, uh, how much was at stake. Everything was absolutely fantastic. I loved every minute of it. Uh, the dialogue back and forth between the two of them. You have the lower third who's trying to bring Rengoku over to be a demon, which if he flipped, that would have been game over for the demon slayers. Like I, He is so powerful. And then giving him demon abilities as well, not good. Like One of the lines that like stuck out to me when he's... Uh, when the demon is kind of like talking crap on humans and talking about how short and fleeting their lives are, uh, Rengoku is like, that's actually what makes humans special uh, because our lives are short and finite and we aren't immortal and can't just heal easily. That's what makes, uh, that's what makes life special to us. And I thought that was such a powerful part in that battle. And it, it gave me chills when he said that. I was so pumped. But at the same time, while all of this is going on, I kind of have like a pit in my stomach. And I'm like, oh my god. I hope they don't kill him off. Like, I'm becoming so attached to this guy. And he's so interesting. Like, fun character. He's so cool, too. Like, all of his techniques and everything were so freaking cool. And obviously, like, you guys have seen the movie, they... Kill him off, I was not excited about that. It crushed me. There were some people in the movie theater crying in that part, and I don't blame them. I was very attached to him by the time this had happened. Uh, and he tries to like sacrifice himself, holding um, the demon's arm inside of him and is trying to like cut off his neck. Um, Tanjiro and Inosuke try to help him out and try to like kill the demon as well. And... I'm like praying that, okay, either they chop off his head or the sunlight kills this demon. Unfortunately, he gets away and I was super upset. I'm like, oh my gosh, they just lost the coolest demon slayer. And this freaking upper third guy who's powerful as hell that killed Rengoku just is able to escape like a rat into the forest. And... Tanjiro is like 
kind of like yelling at him saying like we didn't actually lose today you guys always lo-. like he's he's lost and he's chasing after him into the dark of the force which he probably shouldn't be doing because if the sunlight was yeah he would get yeeted by that by that demon for sure and he's kind of saying like yeah like we're always fighting on your terms like it's like you guys are cowards um we have to fight at night when you guys are powerful and he actually has really good points there and um i'm hoping that this is kind of like foreshadowing that okay one of the goals of the demon slayers is okay we need to find like a lair where some of these high ranking demons are hiding during the day and use the sunlight to our advantage is that going to happen probably not very often maybe they'll kill off one strong guy that way but let's be real they're gonna have to make these battles super difficult <laughs> so um probably not gonna happen often and then rengoku uh tells tanjiro that he actually like his father might know something about some of this fire or flame breathing i can't remember which one i know there is a difference so don't destroy me in the comments uh for not remembering but he tells him like he his father has all these documents that might be able to help him find what he needs to be able to accomplish these techniques that he's trying to uh, do from his family. And that's something like I'm really looking forward to uh, for season two. Obviously, I think that's going to be a major plot point because they put that at the very end of the movie. Uh, he's going to obviously meet his family. We'll probably learn more about Rengoku, probably have some more flashbacks. So That'll be nice, too, um, if we do get that. And then the other thing that I'm really excited for in Season 2 is going to be the progression of Nezuko's uh, like demon blood art abilities. We started to see that she is developing, developing them even further. In the train, we could see she had even leveled it up since her battle with Rui. So... I'm really excited to see what her uh, abilities really blossom into because she is extremely powerful with absolutely no training and doesn't drink blood. So she is so special and I want to see what her ability uh, really blossoms into. But overall, guys, I love the movie. Um, virtually everything about it was very good. Um, it's not my favorite anime movie ever, but it's fantastic i would suggest watching it for anyone that is a fan of demon slayer let me know your thoughts what you liked what you didn't like i will comment back um i actually have a good time uh doing that with people who, who comment on my videos so yeah let me know your thoughts and thanks for watching my video